Hey guys and welcome to today's vlog. Today's vlog is going to be kind of a bit, I'd say emotional, but also kind of a little bit not. So if you guys haven't seen the previous vlogs um, where it's kind of the get to know me a little bit more vlogs, which I did quite a while ago. Um, if you haven't seen that, then I guess you haven't seen the kind of the biggest part of my life. Um, in January of 2017, this year, um, I actually lost Sasha. Sasha, unfortunately, had to be put to sleep. Um, it's taken me a very, very long time to be able to talk about it and not get emotional yes it's still quite emotional to me even though it's been almost seven months now it's still sorry it's been eight months it's still quite emotional for me um to talk about it because she was a big part of my life so if anyone doesn't know Sasha is a German Shepherd cross border collie she was 12 years old when she was put to sleep. Um, she has been on the channel. She will forever remain on the channel. I will not remove any of the videos that have her in because they are a beautiful reminder for me. Um, even if years to come, no one watches the videos anymore. I'm not on YouTube anymore. You never know what could happen in the future. Um, it's always a great reminder for me to be able to see Sasha. Um, I actually watched a video a few days ago. Um, it was actually on um, Sunday I watched the video. And it was the one where we're at the park. And it was just hearing that bark that made me remember every good thing that we had together and it was just that bark that went straight through me that chilled me to the spine because I can still hear that bark because of that video I can still hear her whine because of that video I can still see her at the happy point because of the videos that I made with her so I forever will keep them because they are a brilliant reminder of Sasha Um, I'm getting emotional um, we unfortunately had Sasha put to sleep on the 28th of January 2017. Um, the reason as to why we had to have her put to sleep is that she had got diabetes. And the diabetes was, we didn't know, we had no idea she had diabetes. Um, she was not showing any signs of struggling. It was only when she'd begun going blind and deaf that I said to my dad, look, dad, we need, we need to go and get her help. Um, and I can actually remember it exactly how the whole kind of situation went down. The day before, she, she was partly sighted. Um, she'd not gone completely blind, she was part sighted and she, for some bizarre reason, walked up the stairs completely fine but stumbled on the way down and that stumble was the start of the end, or oh, pretty much, and that stumble caused Sasha to have kind of a shock in her brain that unfortunately caused her to start fitting. So she was fitting and fitting and fitting. We actually took her to the vets and she was given antibiotics and kind of treated and they said everything's okay. It was at that point that the diabetes had, non, had not arisen yet. Um, and then a few days later, we went over to stay at my dad's house and I had work the next day and I've, I always slept downstairs with Sasha because with her fitting I wanted to be downstairs so 
me and Kieran stayed downstairs and that night she fit over 11 times and they were in the space of three hours that she had fits and I was trying to deal with my dog fitting my dad almost passing out from seeing her in such pain me crying because I didn't want to see her in that much pain she was my everything and to see her fitting physically made me sick um so I was stressing because I felt like I couldn't do anything um so I was kind of a complete train wreck um Kieran was the rock he held us all together he was there um oh, sorry actually started urinating herself she never would do that before um and she urinated herself straight away after urinating she'd fit and she did that three times and on the third time she let out the most biggest deep breaths and just laid on the kitchen on, literally on the kitchen flump like not caring just lying there on her side and it was at that moment I thought she'd gone. I honestly thought she'd just gave up and just let it go. Um, she wouldn't move. She weren't actually breathing. She wasn't doing anything. She was just lying there. And then I went over to her and said, "Like Sasha, are you okay? Like, come on, we can, we can, we can do this." Um, and then she got up, and she didn't mean to, but she actually bit my shoulder and her canine teeth went actually into my shoulder and it was only because she was scared she didn't know what was going on she was blind she didn't know what was going on so she bit me not meaning to um because the adrenaline was going through my whole body i didn't feel it i didn't react um i just my eyes were focused on at, the, at that moment was Sasha um, and I said to dad I, I can't take her fit in anymore it's physically killing me so I actually rung the vets and explained to the vets what had happened with her urinating and fitting then kind of just seizuring um, and they actually said you need to get her here now um, I was so scared because I knew this would potentially be the end of Sasha. Like I was so scared. Um and we actually took her to the vets and she Kieran carried her to the vets because I couldn't I didn't have the strength to carry her physically from the car into the vets. And he carried her, put her on the um like the examination table and straight away they looked at her they said she's she's put herself into a coma she's physically put herself into a coma um and i just froze i didn't know what to do i didn't know what to say i i just froze what do you say when your dogs put themselves into a coma so they took her away and said that they were going to catheterise her, put her on a drip and kind of do whatever they could to stabilise her. And we were sat in that waiting room for half an hour. That half an hour felt like a day, probably even more. Um, the vet then came through and said, no, oh, please come in. So we walked in. And my dad couldn't walk in the vets because he knew what was coming. I sensed what was coming, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Um, so we walked into the, like, the vet room. And that's when they said she had diabetes. And that her sugar levels had physically put her into a coma level. Because they were so, so ridiculously high that she'd gone into a physical coma and thank you Theodore like talking about something important here. Weirdo. 
um, but her levels had physically put her into a coma because they were so high um, and they said to me that she could survive she she could survive she could not survive it was a 50 50 chance and I don't want to believe that 50 50 chance I was so scared um, and they basically said that for her to survive she would need two injections a day um, I I could do it completely fine because I gave injections before to her so I, I could do it dad couldn't that was the difference between my dad and kind of me I would be able to give her the injections because I'd know where to do it he wouldn't because he'd be scared of hurting her um, so the vets actually said that with the injections they couldn't stop it from happening in the future she could go sky high again in the future and they said that she might not be able to survive basically my my gut dropped because I knew what they were going to say and they basically said that the best thing for her would be to put her to sleep <laughs> and that's what we did I've been trying so so hard not to get upset but obviously it's not happening so we said that we would put her to sleep uh, because she's my dad's kind of like signed all the paperwork and she's through his name in the vets um, he had to unfortunately sign the piece of paper that allowed them to put her to sleep that was probably the hardest thing that my dad did was sign that piece of paper. Um, he's honestly said to me that he felt like he was signing a death certificate because his signature on that piece of paper allowed them to, in words, kill Sasha and put her to sleep. My dad didn't come with her um, when they put her to sleep. I did. Me and Kieran went with them um, when they actually put Sasha to sleep and it's weird because it was a beautiful, beautiful place that they had her in. Yes, it was a vet's but they didn't make it seem like we were in a vet's and we were going to see the end of her life. Um, she, when I got to her, she was lying on the exact same table that they wheeled her through in um, and she had a purple and pink blanket over her and then she had like a brown kind of hospital blanket over the top of that just to keep her warm and just to kind of cover her back end and the catheter um, as I got closer to her in her right paw well her right um, forearm she had um, the drip and that had a purple and pink kind of wrap around it which I thought was really cute um, but she was lifeless when we got there she was just lying there not kind of caring I think she'd accepted what had happened and what was coming type of thing um, and I actually asked the lady what they were going to do when they put her to sleep because I've been in vets where they've used different chemicals they've used um, anaesthetic or they have used a kind of like a creamy white um, anaesthetic and I said to them like she said honestly we don't normally tell people what we like we use but I didn't know about the um, anesthetic, the chemical anesthetic, uh, anesthetic that comes in the liquid. I knew about kind of the creamy one, um, so I said to them like, please don't use the cream one. Like, if you're gonna use anything, just don't use that cream one. And they then said why, and I said to them, 
I've worked with it before. I, I know what that does. <laughs> so it was strange because I knew what was happening and I knew kind of what the end result was going to be. But I, I, I kind of didn't want them to use something. I know what happens when it's put into a body. So they actually used the liquid version of anaesthetic but because she'd put herself into a coma they just kind of overdosed her type thing so she went to sleep and then just kind of stopped breathing stopped her heart stopped kind of everything else um but it was just odd the facts when she was being put to sleep i was stroking her i was kissing her head and as her diaphragm stopped she actually yelped because she was trying to tell her body breathe i need to breathe um but because the chemical was already in her and it was stopping everything she couldn't breathe so she yelped that scared me because it made me feel like she could feel it i'm glad she couldn't because i was there i would have felt horrible if she could feel everything that was going on but i just hope that she felt my presence there I said I wasn't going to get emotional. Um, but yeah, Sasha was put to sleep and I did get a bag of her fur from her neck because I always kind of loved the colour that was on her. So I kept that. Um, we did have her cremated and I did scatter her um, just because I wanted her to be free always. I never wanted her to be restricted. I always wanted her to be free. Um, oh, I'm getting really, really emotional. Um, but it's strange because I know a lot of other people have lost their dogs. Um, I never knew what it felt like to lose a dog. She, I was with her when I was younger, grown up with her. It does feel weird not having her and going to my dad's and not seeing her it does feel weird but I think I, I it has taken a long time to accept what has happened um and someone very 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 like very close to me they lost their dog as well um recently and I just want to say to them that I will always be with you. Um, that Laker and Sasha will forever be with each other. And I just hope that they're in kind of a happy place. Um, I know that Sasha will never kind of hate me for having her put to sleep. Because at the end of the day there was nothing I could have done to help her. I just wish that we had that little bit longer left with her but i will forever love her to pieces and always have her i also have the videos with her so i'll always have reminders of that bark that little play that she always did the stupid times with the water bottles i'll forever have good memories with her yes i can't remember the crap memories i can't remember the horrible memories but it's just trying to remember the good memories but oh. stop crying um i just wanted to do this vlog just because i have been getting a lot of messages of people asking me where sasha is and why i haven't been doing any vlogs with her because i said that i would be doing vlogs with her in the future so i just wanted to do this vlog just to tell you guys what happened and why i won't be doing any more vlogs with sasha um we have got elfie yes we got elfie two weeks after sasha no sorry sasha was put to sleep the either the monday and we got elfie the saturday that was not planned um kieran's mum bless her little heart she had already arranged to take elfie on before sasha was put to sleep um i will never blame anyone for bringing elfie into the family 
um, if anything he probably came at a perfect time because it allowed me to not miss out on a routine um, because of Sasha because it'd be waking up in the morning taking her for a walk feeding her letting her out like they didn't allow me to miss that they kind of brought it right where I needed it they brought Alfie right whenever I needed him so I'll never hate anyone for doing that yes I did resent Alfie when we first got him yes I hated well I won't say I hated yes I disliked Fiona and Lindsay because they brought Alfie into like kind of the situation but now I absolutely love Alfie to pieces he does things that remind me of Sasha and it makes me feel like Sasha is secretly in Alfie so everything's good now I love Alfie he's downstairs at the minute but I do love him um and I know that Sasha will forever be my dog she'll always be in my heart she'll never leave me um I have got a necklace with um Sasha's fur in and I have kept everything that Sasha was returned to me in when she was cremated that's on my shelf just so when I'm feeling a bit low I can kind of look at it and know that she's always with me and um, I have got a white feather as well and I'm always told that when you see a white feather then it is your spirit and I'm always finding white feathers everywhere um so I'm gonna end this vlog because I'm getting really really emotional um and I'm starting to sound really stupid and my nose is starting to run so I'm gonna go and probably have a have a cuddle with Elfie but I hope you well I don't even know I hope you appreciate this vlog because it's very rare to get me talking about things that hurt and things that really really upset me but I'm gonna try and do more vlogs like this that show my weaknesses because everybody has them um but i'll definitely be doing more vlogs kind of explaining my weaknesses and what scares me and stuff like that but please like this video and show your appreciation to sasha and laker um uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you all in the next one Bye guys.